Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. <laughs> There's that classic cherry stain again. So we're going to go ahead and stain the pieces for the armoire prior to assembly because if you remember, dolls, if you get glue on the wood, then you won't be able to stain on top of it. Now I have my instructions nearby. I've already um, made sure all my pieces are there and I've dry fitted it but I'm going to go keep my uh, keep my directions nearby because when you're assembling someone else's design, you kind of want to keep up with their vision for um, what you're doing and to familiarize yourself with the pieces. Now I have a brush and I'm just going to go along uh, the same direction of the grain to stain it. I was going to use two um, different color stains like I did with the table I assembled. Um, if you haven't seen that video, de definitely check it out where I assembled a kit from the same line, the federal line of Houseworks uh, miniature kits. But I'm going to just go ahead and use this um, cherry stain that we got. It's called Classic Cherry. It's a lot lighter than the cherry colors um, me or probably everybody else is used to seeing. And I did decide to go ahead and put a glove on to make this a little bit safer. So I just want to just go, uh, just remind you dolls to take your time. I have sped up the video in this instance, just so you can kind of see what I did, but you have to um, stain both sides and this is a penetrating stain. So it's going to go in, but you definitely need to um, complete your pieces and allow them to dry at least eight hours. I recommend allowing them to dry overnight, but I just wanted to show you this process before we begin to assemble so you can just know like it's, it's tedious it is but just take your time because you want your end product to be something lovely and something you won't mind displaying in your project and after you've completed your pieces allow them to sit and dry now this um, item is from the same collection I dyed it with a different stain but I was just noticing the texture of the wood on some of the pieces were very similar. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. Some of the um, wood has a really deep grain in it. And um, I noticed that, um, but I didn't see that in the table kit from this same line. So as I mentioned, um, I was just staining the pieces, taking my time. And as I was staining them, I was just familiarizing myself with the pieces that I noticed as far as the diagram. And I sped this part up so we can kind of move through it, but just um, make sure uh, as you stain, you you know do even coats. You know, you don't want to put more coats on one part than you did on the other. Now, as I mentioned before, I recommend that you allow it to dry at least eight hours. I allowed it to dry overnight because you don't want the oils from the stain to inhibit the adhesion um, between your joints as you're assembling. So I pulled out the parts list again and I keep it handy dolls. You don't ever want to get too confident when you're assembling um, someone else's design because sometimes there are things that you don't notice at first that as you begin to assemble become apparent later on. So I looked at the drawer that was one of the simplest assemblies. I figured I would start with that and allow it to be drying while I was assembling the body of the armoire. Now dolls, you definitely want to do this in pieces or in portions. So I'm going to do the drawer and I also decided that I would go ahead and assemble what is considered the feet or the base. So that was um, in that little bag. I'd already stained it. It had dried. And so I decided to assemble it as well and allow it to sit along with the drawer to dry. You don't want to try to do everything at once. If you can do small portions and allow them to dry and be stable, it'll help you in the process of the overall construction. So yeah, so I just laid out the diagram so that I could see all my pieces and make sure I was considering this the correct pieces to be assembled. That's the back. That's both of the sides. I have um, two bottoms that have the drill holes in them that are going to suspend the doors. Those are the both front doors. So I want to keep them handy and they, they're already pre-drilled. 
Let me see that. That's the holes. Okay, and I got to make sure I glue those pins in. And these are the top and the bottom where the doors will be suspended. So one is going to be on the bottom and one is going to be at the top. So I definitely want to be aware of that because there are two other pieces that have that same shape that don't have drilled holes. So you just have to be conscious of the construction because if you try to do it too fast, you'll glue the wrong piece. And yeah, once Gorilla Wood glue takes hold, that's it. So here I'm just gently arranging uh, the pieces that I'm about to assemble. Sorry for the camera shaking dolls. So there are four pieces for my base and five pieces for the drawer. So you see, I just keep referencing the diagram and the picture because when you're assembling someone else's design, you just have to be conscious of what parts um, are joined which way. So, so here's a good example of what I mean. So many times with a drawer, you're going to have the base lay flat and then that's my glue. And then you're going to put the back of the drawer and the sides of the drawer on the outside portion of the base. You're not going to sit the sides and back of the drawer on top of the base. And you'll see what I mean as I begin to assemble. And those are the things you want to be conscious of because if you were to put the side pieces on top of the base, it's going to distort the size of your drawer. Your drawer wouldn't be wide enough and it would make it too tall to fit in the space. Now, in instances when I'm assembling um, my own designs, I a lot of times do the drawer last after the opening is made, but these pieces have been pre-cut, they're precision cut, um, machine made. So there is more accuracy and precision of the cuts when something is done by machine. That's why people um, do laser cuts or use the, the different um, uh, machines to cut wood because it does give you more accuracy. So you don't have to be as concerned about it not fitting as you would if you were doing your own design and hand cutting it with a blade. Now use a very small amount of glue um, as you're putting it around your base because although your item is already stained, you still don't want a lot of oozing. You know, this is a kit and you want it to look as good as the pieces uh, that are mass produced. Or if you have artesian pieces in your collection, you want your piece that you created with a kit to stand just as strong and just as proud and showing that you took the time and the care to do it neatly. Now, if you make a mistake, you definitely can clean it off, but don't be sloppy in your construction. Uh, you definitely just want to take the time and the care to do it well. Okay, and so I'm adding a very delicate amount of glue to the, the side and gently adding it. And remember, I already added glue to the side of the base. And, you know, because the Gorilla Glue is, 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 a, is a excellent, makes an excellent bond, you don't need a lot of it. And just take your time and just assemble it very gently. Don't squeeze and press on it. Now, I do kind of slide it a little bit from time to time to make sure it doesn't uh, glue or bond to the paper. Now, I did bring out my little Lego blocks because, to me, they're really awesome to help things stay square. And just like on larger pieces, you would use the one, two, three blocks to kind of hold it and stabilize it or keep it square. That's what I use my little Lego blocks for. Okay, and then you see I'm just kind of sliding it just to make sure it doesn't stick to the wax paper. Now I'm gonna allow that portion to dry before I add my drawer front. And I'm just gonna sit my Lego block there just to stabilize it, just in case one of those sides tries to fall inward. So that just keeps it, you know, so it'll stay straight and upright. And so I'm going to just set it aside so it can dry and we can go on and work on the other part. Okay, so this is the base. And again, I'm looking at my diagram and making sure I lined it up based on the image. Now I read the instructions 
And um, again, just like when you read an instruction, but for me, sometimes just the picture makes sense sometimes more than someone's explanation because sometimes the way people explain things is not, um, they try to be too technical. And for me, that's, um, that's annoying. I like the image because you can see exactly what they mean. And I lined it up. And after I lined it up the way I see it in the diagram, I added the glue to the ends. I'm just kind of sliding it so you can see. I laid it there kind of in the dry fit shape so I would know exactly where everything was going. Now, as I say all the time, dolls, take your time. I didn't do a lot of speeding up on this video because I really wanted you to see how I was doing things. If you need to take a break or get you something to drink, or get you something to eat, take a moment, have a cup of coffee, you know, don't try to rush through this, you know, do one component at a time, allow those pieces to dry and come back and look at everything, but don't put unrealistic deadlines on yourself when you're assembling your miniatures, you know, you just want it to be good and you want to enjoy the process, you know, don't miss the joy of the process trying to rush to the finish. Now, this is the back. And um, those are the two sides. And you see that trench at the bottom is where there's going to be a divider because the drawer in this armoire is at the bottom. So I looked at the two sides of the um, back of it and I chose the smoother, nicer side to be on the inside because that's where my doll's clothes will be. So the more coarse side, I allowed it to be on the outside. So I just pushed that drawer out of the way so that it wouldn't be in the way while I'm working on the actual body of the armoire and push that base over to the side as well. And so I laid out my pieces again, laid them out like it shows in the diagram. And you see there's not uh, like a notched area border all the way around both pieces of the sides. So that's where the back is going to fit in. And in the front, that's where the doors are going to fit. So I just wanted to be conscious of that in the process. So I glue them to the right parts of the joint, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I'm just looking to see which goes, which piece goes where, and then I decide I'm going to go ahead and add glue because there's a piece that goes in between the two side pieces to stabilize it to be the beginning of the drawer area. Okay, if you can kind of see that, dolls. Okay, see this is this is the bottom and there's another piece that's going to fit there, but that that will hold and stabilize the other three pieces together. So I'm going to start there. So I'm adding the glue very small amount to that back joint. Although I'm using a toothpick, you can also use a coffee stir stick to apply your glue. Take it all the way down. And again, I'm putting the, the most sparing amount that I can put where it would be the least amount of what I call oozing when I press the two joints together. There's going to be some dolls, but you just don't want it to be a lot because I don't want it messing up and distorting my finish. Now, although um, I've already stained the, the armoire pieces, I actually may do a different finish on them, but I still wanted the undertone to be um, wooden. But I don't want glue all over it either way. So that was my first piece. And I started to put the Lego block there. And then I realized, um, yeah, this would be a job for the one, two, three blocks. And so they're just keeping everything stabilized while I'm working. And it'll uh, be a lot more stable when I add this fourth piece, which is the bottom of the clothing area and the beginning of the the drawer structure. So I just kind of slid that in there and then we do have a little oozing on the side, but I got it off, but, and it's a nice notch there. So I was pressing that together to make sure that took hold and see my base is drying. So now I'm starting to kind of see how it's going to come together. So it's getting exciting dolls. I really, I really enjoy the process. You definitely want to finish the item, but I really enjoy watching the pieces come together. Okay. So now I do realize that there's another piece that's going to fit on top of that. 
that's going to be the structure of the inside of the wardrobe. So you see that base piece in the diagram. So that's why you keep the image or the instructions close by so you don't get carried away and do something you weren't supposed to do. And again, I'm just um, dry fitting that base piece, the bottom to where the drawer is going to be just to see how it'll all fit together while those other pieces are drying. Because that will kind of give me the body of the armoire and I'll kind of have like the, the, the base construction and then I'll be able to add the other components little by little. Okay, and I see that that's one of the pieces that has the holes in it. So the two pieces, um, one at the bottom, one at the top, both have the holes in it. And that's to suspend the doors. So I just want to be conscious of that um, just to make sure that I don't um, glue it in before time. Now, I'm noticing that there seems to be a little struggle with the fit of that top piece. And I suspect that there may be some warping. Again, um, these kits, this kit is dated 1992. So it's possible that um, the wood got cold or hot or damp or something. But it's I think it's slightly warped. So I'm going to have to really work with the fit of that top piece because it's not fitting in easily like all the rest of the pieces that I've assembled so far. So those are kind of things you may have to look out for. Now, it doesn't happen often. I'll be absolutely honest, dolls. This has never happened to me with all the different kits that I've done over the years. I, this has never happened. So um, I'm glad that it kind of occurred so that I can just let you see, you know, what I had to do to remedy it. Um, it's not something that's major. It's like a centimeter or so where it's a little bit bold, but I'm going to, I'm going to correct it in the end, but I just wanted to leave this here to let you know that sometimes these things happen. Now this could happen while you're working on your own design where you may have to adjust something or sand it, or you may even have to, uh, dampen and heat up the wood, um, uh, to, um, make it conform to do some of the designs or things that you want to do. So, it's nothing that you can't fix, dolls. It's nothing that's, um, you know, out, out of your reach of making it right. So here's the basic construction of the drawer. I'm going to go ahead and put that drawer front on there because it can be drying while I'm working on the other portion. Okay, again, doing the same thing, putting a very sparing amount on there. And after I got it around the perimeter of the front of the drawer, I just sat it down on the wax paper and actually just went ahead and slid the front up to it. Now, when it comes to the drawers, definitely be aware of your little borders on the side because you don't want it to be too far to the left or the right. You want to leave the right amount. So again, that it'll fit into that defined space for the drawer. And you see just that little edge, the little lip on the side of the drawer is what I'm referring to. So I went back to struggling with this top of the armoire, but after wrestling with it a little bit, I realized what I would need to do. So I set it aside and went ahead to put together the piece that I knew was fitting properly, which was the bottom. And I added the glue. And again, being careful, I got a little free with the glue there, dolls. And I'm about to do what I told you not to do. Look at that. Yep, got to clean that off. So I got it all fitted and set in there. And you see, I do have a little, what I call oozing, but I'm going to clean that up really quick. I'm getting that all set. And I'm actually going to put some tape at the bottom to ensure that that join stays nice and tight while it's drying. So then I pulled out the center portion. Now it had been dry fitted previously and I did it again. Everything seems to be straight and uh, flush. So I began to add the glue into the inner joints of that portion. Now, as you work with kits, just kind of think about them sort of like putting a puzzle together. I mean, the basic structure of the armoire is a box. 
and it's comprised of a lot of other little boxes, the area for the drawer and the shelves. So if you kind of simplify it in your mind as to what it is, it kind of takes the complexity out of it. Now that base portion is dry now where the legs are. So I'm just kind of dry fitting it to see how that'll sit because I can see it's all coming together. And I'm still waiting for those sides to dry. So I'm just kind of giving it a moment because now I know where I'm going from this point. I'm still looking at that top part because I know I'm going to have to do some special um, maneuvering to make that work. But I just kind of wanted to make sure that inner portion was dry and solid before I moved forward. So based on the diagram, that little unit is to be glued to the part that's on top of the drawer area. So I prepared to glue that. Now when you're joining a flat surface like this, make sure you take the glue all the way out to the corners, spread it as thin as possible without oozing, but you want it to get into all of the corners because you want a flush solid bond. And after I got it all prepped to be glued, I added glue to the ends of the shelves because after that flat part is in, I won't be able to get to the ends of the shelves. So you have to do that ahead of time. Now there will be a little bit of oozing, but it's not going to be much. So you just take your time and get it off as quickly as possible. This would be an instance where your wet wipes or baby wipes would come in really, really handy to clean that up. So after it was in, I clamped it and I looked around and I definitely cleaned up the glue and, and braced it and definitely just turn it different ways just to look at it to make sure you can see really clearly what's going on you know just turn it all different ways just so you can make sure that you're getting a clear idea of what's happening with your piece and then i put masking tape to stabilize that piece until it dried because i wanted it to dry flush and flat because i don't want my doors to be off alignment because the shelving is off so after I taped that down, I allowed that portion to dry and then I bandaged <laughs> the body of the armoire around again to stabilize those pieces while they're drying. Because even though they were setting, the glue is still flexible enough for you to maneuver it around. And I cleaned up my drawer and inspected it. It turned out really cute. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, so I just put my one, two, three blocks on the sides to stabilize it. And while the body of the armoire was drying, I decided to go ahead and start to work on my hardware. Now, we're not talking about the decorative hardware. I'm talking about my pins for my hinge. So the pre-drilled um, ends of the doors, I went ahead and dipped the pins into the Gorilla Wood Glue and put them into both ends of both of the doors so they would be drying while I was working on the other portion. So things are coming together, dolls. It looks like assembly is truly underway. And make sure you clean the glue from around the pin because you don't want it to make where your door has difficulty opening and closing. But everything is pre-drilled with a kit. The pins are pre-cut. They're the perfect uh, length. So then I went back to the body of the armoire. It was drying and I had put my little Lego blocks in there to just make sure everything was square. They're the perfect height. They come in so handy. So, so they're the perfect size. So I don't want to encourage stealing, but ask your either children or grandchildren if you could get a couple of blocks to help you with your miniature projects. Now these are my both front doors. The pins are nice and dry. So it's time for me to go ahead, see the rounded front. That's so cute. I think that's going to be so pretty. So we're going to go ahead and put them in the pins and fit them in so that they will already be suspended before I put the top on the armoire. Okay, so I'm joining it in there just to make sure everything fits neatly. Okay, so that's the other pin. So I'm going to slide that in there and just adjust it just to make sure that the doors are laying together nice and neat. And I have a nice, neat 
flush finish on the door. So that makes me feel good and it makes me know that the rest of the construction of the armoire is in order. Everything is fitting together nicely because the doors fit nice. So I definitely am going to have to work on that top portion, but the rest of the body is okay. I am really excited, dolls. Look how that's looking. Now we're not finished yet, but I can really, really see um, how it's going to look. I'm really, really proud of this little piece. And again, I may do some other finishing, but I'm excited that the structure is on point. Oh, that looks cute. Let me be careful. I don't want to get it stuck in there with no handles on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this top a little bit. See, because this is going to be the part that fits over the top, but I still don't want uh, the portion where the doors are to be off center because that could just make it, um, it could make it look crooked. So I just played around with it a little bit, dolls, to just see um, what part of the structure needed to be modified. And so I decided to go ahead and put the glue on. And after I got the glue on, I was going to just, just tape it down really, really tight. Um, it's possible in instances like this sometimes, um, if I were to like dampen the wood, like with some warm water, you know, not just saturate it, but you just kind of dampen it so that the fibers of the wood will loosen up. You know, that works sometimes with working with um, warped pieces. Um, that, that works for me. I've had instances like this before. But in this case, I just went ahead and put the glue in it and tried to tape it down really, really good so that it would dry stable. And I really almost put like a body cast of masking tape on it to allow it to dry so after I felt comfortable with the top, I went ahead to work on my decorative hardware and my handles. So if you can see in the wood, uh, there's almost like a shadow where the center of the drawer is. So I was marking the area where I wanted my drawer pulls to be. And um, using that guide of the shadow that's on the wood and the central portion where the doors split, I was using that as my guide and I marked it with my pencil. Now, dolls, I went ahead and said, I, after prepping my area for my hardware, I decided to go ahead and put the base or the legs on the armbar. I figured that could be drying while I was working on the hardware. So I put glue actually on the body of the armbar and on the base portion probably did too much. I probably should have just put it on one or the other. That's why I'm getting so much oozing. Again, dolls, make sure you're aware of what you're doing. Sometimes you'll get caught in a thought and you know, you'll do something that you really didn't intend to do, but it worked out. I just had to clean up the glue a little bit extra due to the extra oozing, but it fit on there really, really nice. I'm really pleased with how this is turning out, dolls. And I just kind of checked it from all angles to make sure everything was square. Because sometimes when you're handling it, you can be, well, I can be a little bit heavy handed and was throwing the base out of shape, but it worked out. It's really turning out cute. I'm really happy with the overall design of the armoire. It's really, really turning out pretty. I'm just checking it on all sides just to see how it's looking, to check the lines and the seams to make sure I didn't miss anything. So after I turned it and checked everything, I knew that I needed to go ahead and complete uh, the hardware. I already had marked it where I wanted to put the holes. Now the hardware already had two holes in it. So I used those as my guide. I marked the area and then I put the hardware right where the mark was and I pushed through with my drill the where I wanted to put the holes for the hardware if that makes any sense I just pushed them right through the holes to the area that I wanted to insert my pins now for this uh piece of furniture the front the bow front the wood is pretty thick and it's kind of soft so it made it relatively easily 
to um, make the hole and to put the indention where I want it um, to drill. So just take your time, um, be very careful. Um, you want to put a very sparing amount of glue under the area for the heart where you don't want any oozing in this instance, because that's something that will really um, that will really ruin the look of a piece if there's glue and oozing around where the hardware is. But you see, I'm just doing very, very, um, very light drilling. I'm not pressing really hard because I don't want the hole to be uh, overly big. But just take your time. And after you've gotten the holes to the desired amount, then you'll actually be able to take the uh, pre-bent uh, metal pieces and actually just press it through. Now when it came to measuring to put the little knobs in, I measured how high up that I wanted uh, my knobs to be and I put a piece of masking tape there. So that would give me my guide and I marked it with the pencil because I didn't want it too close to the opening. And dolls, yes, I'm sorry I'm doing this by eye. But I did measure um, as far as the distance, how far I wanted it to be up. And I knew I just wanted it to be more or less like one centimeter in from the split or the opening portion of the armoire. So after I uh, measured it and marked it, I took my drill. And I just, again... I didn't go in too deep. I didn't do a deep drill. I just turned it a couple times because the pins are really, really small and the area that's actually going to go into the wood is really short. So I didn't need it to be very deep. So I more or less just pressed the wood, twisted it a little bit, and I actually inserted the little um, handles into the Gorilla Wood glue and just gently pressed them in. See, this is one of the things that makes kits so much fun because a lot of the work has already been done for you. They've already designed it. The pins um, are ready for the uh, hinges. The little handles are already prepared. So you're just pressing the wood. And again, the doors are kind of thick and the wood is soft. So it was easy to make an indention that was big enough to put the doorknobs on. So I just cleaned up the glue. So now the, and all the hardware is on, the drawer pulls are drying, the drawer, do, drawer pulls are, <laughs> the door pulls and the drawer pulls are drying. So now it's time to add the top to the armoire. Now again, this is another instance where you want to take your glue all the way out to the ends, but you be careful because you don't want to put it out on that extra lip. And create extra oozing because that extra lip is kind of exposed in the front, the area that's considered the bow front. Well, you'll see in a minute, dolls. So I did coat that area really good. And when I went to really press the top of the armoire down, I could tell there's definitely warping. That top piece is bowed, and I could see even around the edges. Uh, it just wasn't closing right. So I had to wait a moment. I had to kind of gather my thoughts to decide how I would um, combat this. So I began to wrap it with the masking tape. I added a little bit more glue to the join. And because the, the Gorilla Wood glue actually is being absorbed into the wood, it softened it a little bit. So I wrapped it from the side. So this is a rare case, dolls. I ended up doing a full body bandage on the armoire from top to bottom and around the sides to brace it while it's completing the drying process for the top or finishing piece. Now, this is not something you always have to do, but I did a crisscross type um, bandage pulling down the corners of the top and just like I said, did a full body uh, cast of the piece and allowed it to dry and it worked out. So I just want you to see sometime even when you run into problems, it doesn't mean failure. It just means you have to make other adjustments. And I unwrapped my piece after it had dried 
and it turned out lovely. So I just want you dolls to know, you know, don't just dis get discouraged when you run into little problems when you're making your miniatures. You know, things happen. You know, working with miniatures is just like life. You have ups, you have downs, but in the end, you turn up with something great. Um, the piece turned out really great, really lovely. I'm definitely going to do some additional finishing on it. But the overall structure and design, I am very, very happy. I hope you dolls grab you a couple kits and try them out. They'll definitely help you with understanding some of the basic components of furniture assembly and just working with miniatures, some of the things that you can run into um, if you decide to um, build and design your own furniture. So if you've enjoyed this video today, dolls, let me know in the comments. Also like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those are my regular upload days. We've got a lot of ground to cover at the Rooming House Dollhouse House because we're going to begin the next phase of renovation. So I don't want you to miss out. A special thank you to my subscribers. You all are amazing. And also those of you who have, who have not subscribed, but you're watching, I appreciate you as well. As usual, dolls, I've enjoyed you so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.